Hey everyone, it's me Kind. Welcome back to my channel. I am back with a sewing tutorial. Oh my god, I feel like it's been so long since I've seen you guys in a horizontal form. I know I've been posting like shorts here and there, and I guess for those of you that follow me elsewhere, um, it hasn't really been that long since you've last seen me, but I feel like it's been years since I've talked to my YouTube subscribers. I feel like so much has happened since you all last saw me. I mean, I got married. I graduated from university. Um, probably most importantly was I got my ears pierced. Hello. And basically to make a long story short, I decided I wanted to start like actually wearing real earrings in drag. Essentially every time I get earrings that are not like clip-ons, I like bend the needle back, cover it in glue like a mongrel and just like, glue it to my ear. And I decided I deserve better than that. And I want to like actually wear earrings the way they're meant to be worn. So I decided to bite the bullet as it were and pierce the ears. I'm being so dramatic about it because I like hate needles and I was like so against it for so long just because I didn't want to do the pain. But she's in the healing phase right now. The piercer said I have to keep these in for six months before switching it out to something else and I can't really put the clip-ons over top of this. It's gonna be a while until I bring back my big drag earrings but right now we're just rocking that little dainty cubic zirconia realness, right? Anyway, God, I go on such a tangent when I'm on this channel. You guys know I love doing my math lessons, being the math queen, I am in my math era, but I feel like everywhere I go, people are like, where's your next sewing tutorial? When's your next wig tutorial? So I thought I would, you know, give you guys what you deserve really for putting up with me all this time. So I had the brilliant idea, if I may, to do a sewing tutorial on a dress inspired by a hyperbolic surface. Basically this dress has been like, a project that's been months in the making actually. I had the idea um, from a blog post I saw of somebody making a hyperbolic quilt and I thought I need to make that into a dress. So I'll put that blog post in the description because basically like half of this tutorial is me following the blog post. <laughs> to give a very brief math lesson on what I mean by hyperbolic here, um, basically there are three kinds of geometries. There's Euclidean geometry, which is the geometry we learn in school of like flat surfaces. If you imagine putting together squares, you can tile a flat plane with squares. And you can also tile a flat plane with triangles or hexagons. If you put together three pentagons in a corner, it doesn't really lie flat, but you can form it into a sphere like this. But what if we tried to put together four pentagons in a corner? You wouldn't get a flat plane or a sphere. What you'd get is called a hyperbolic surface, which is really hard to visualize. So it's usually rendered like this in textbooks and the pentagons have to get smaller and smaller as they go away from the center, only so that it can fit on the screen. But in reality, you have to think that all these pentagons are gonna be the same size. Well, that's essentially what we're sewing today because here, if you look carefully, there are four pentagons sewn into one corner. And that's what's creating all these ruffles and all this movement and texture. So I thought it would be like the perfect idea for a dress. So this is what we're making today. So without any more further ado, let's get into the video. Hey guys, we're at the fabric store right now shopping for some fabrics and I made this mood board on Photoshop Express. Um, it's a really easy way to just sort of compile together inspiration pictures. And this is the color scheme I wanna go for. It's blue and purple, sort of like a galaxy. And I want to do a little pop of yellow somewhere in there, I think. Um, but this is the fabric that I got. I ended up getting eight yards of both of these, um, purple and blue. You don't have to go for like stretch fabric for this. You can um, kind of use anything. I actually wanted to go for like a scuba or neoprene um, because those like wouldn't really fray at the edges, but this is all I could find. Um, but you can use whatever two colors you think works best. This is the template I used to cut out the pentagons. It's originally designed by Helaman Ferguson, who's a mathematician and a sculptor. And basically you cut out a whole bunch of pentagons with this. The reason there's a cutout on the inside is because this is gonna be the seam allowance. So we're gonna trace the inside and outside. You'll also need scissors and chalk and lots of patience. You wanna cut out 25 pentagons from one color and 26 from another. That's 51 pentagons in total if you're doing the math. There's a lot of math in this video. But my fabric was on a fold, so I only had to trace 13 pentagons because it was two layers. Um, but since it was two layers, I wanted to pin like the fabric together before I started cutting so that the two layers didn't kind of slide underneath each other. So then you just wanna cut out that outer pentagon. Taking apart the pins and I realized the second layer of fabric 
didn't have that inner pentagon traced on it. So I needed to do that because that's gonna let you know where your seam allowance is gonna be, which makes things really easy later on when you're sewing it together. Fast forward what felt like 1 million years. Okay, maybe it was like two hours. And I have 25 blue pentagons and 26 purple, all with the seam allowance marked with chalk. Now we want to start sewing them together. You always want adjacent pentagons to be opposite colors, so it's always going to be a purple and blue that I'm sewing together. And I'm having them right sides facing each other so that the chalk seam allowance, that's the bit that I'm sewing on. And only sew on one edge for now, right? And I'm using a dark blue thread to match the blue fabric. So we're going to sew all the pentagons into pairs. So I have 25 pairs with the 25 blues and 25 of the purples. There should be one leftover purple pentagon that we'll save for later. Now we're going to take the pairs and pair them up again to make some foursomes. Line up the right sides together with the purple facing blue and the blue facing purple and just sew along that chalk line. One piece of advice is to cut the loose threads along each step of the way. If you wait till the end, there's going to be hundreds of loose threads all over the place. I promise, take the time to do it as you go. This is how the foursomes should ideally look. You want the center to be really neat, and the way to do that is to use pins. When you match them up, make it so that the intersection point, you have the blue just barely kissing the opposite blue, and the purple just barely kissing the opposite purple, really lining up the seams. You don't have to make all of them into foursomes, you just need 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there should still be 5 2 sums left over, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plus the one pentagon that's still on its own. Out of the 10 4 sums, we're going to set aside 5 of them, we want to keep these for later, and take the other 5 and turn them into 6 sums by sewing each of the 5 4 sums with one of the 5 2 sums or pairs. So in total, you should have five groups of six and five groups of four. I know it's complicated, but that's just the way it is. Putting it all together now, I made this diagram of what the finished sheet is going to look like. So remember that one extra pentagon that was left over? That's going to be the center. And then you're going to sew the five groups of four pentagons to the five sides of the center pentagon, like this. And then we're going to sew the five groups of six pentagons to the five corners of the center pentagon, like this. It's harder to visualize in person because my floor is flat like a Euclidean plane. You can basically only flatten small portions of the sheet at a time, but other parts are always going to look really roughly. But that's the fun part of it. So start by sewing the four sums to the edges first, and then sew in the six sums in the corners second should look like this, and then repeat with all the other sides. And this is what you should get. For all the raw edges on the outside, I'm gonna fold and iron them on the seam allowance line and then hem the edges. Now this really took me ages. The circumference of this all the way around was 450 inches or over 11 meters, longer than a school bus. So you'll save yourself a lot of work if you use a fabric that doesn't fray and therefore doesn't need to be hemmed but I think I'm a little crazy. I even used alternating colors, so I had to keep stopping and starting again because I used the blue thread on the blue parts and the purple thread on the purple parts. And then I repeated this like two more times to make a total of three of these hyperbolic sheets. I mean, technically I made like six of these because I didn't initially know what I wanted to do with this dress, so I just kept making these sheets so I had a lot to work with. Um, but I decided I'd make a little tube dress as well, based instead on a flat Euclidean plane, so I used what was left over of my fabric to make a blue and purple square tiling, like a checkerboard pattern. To make a checkerboard pattern, you have to cut stripes from both colors. I made the stripes three inches wide. That way, if I took a half inch off for seam allowance on both sides, then the squares would be two inches by two inches. Sew together alternating colors of stripes, and then cut that fabric into stripes the opposite way, and sew together alternating pieces again. Just using rulers and chalk the entire time so you get straight lines. Um, I didn't film me making the whole thing so this is just an example. I actually made a much larger rectangle. For the dimensions I measured from above my bra down to where I want the dress to stop. So that was the length and for the width I took the measurement around the widest part of my hips and I made one big checkerboard rectangle with those dimensions. And then I just tried it on, I took it in at the waist where it was too loose, and I added a zipper to the back. To make the shoulder straps, I took some elastic and made a casing out of fabric. You sew the fabric in half lengthwise and cut off the excess seam allowance, and then turn it inside out. I used a safety pin, 
and then you use the safety pin again to feed the elastic back into the tube once the tube is turned right side out. Then you just sew the strap into the dress wherever you think it looks best. I went into my closet and looked at my other short tube dresses for inspiration for this whole step. My next idea was to take one of the hyperbolic sheets and fold it in half and sew it to the elastic strap to make a little sleeve. Just make sure to use a zigzag stitch to keep the stretch in the elastics. All right, everyone, I'm wigless right now, but this is what the dress looks like. So I just sewed the straps onto the dress. So you can kind of see it there. Um, sorry if I didn't shave my armpits. And this is it from the back. I guess you could even do it off the shoulder like this. But as the final step, what I did was I took a third hyperbolic sheet and I just um, seam ripped out the center pentagon. Hello. So I just put it over my head before I put on my wig and I just wear it as a collar, kind of like that. You just have to make sure to hem these raw edges right here if you wanna wear it like this. Isn't that cute? Let me put on my wig, I'll be right back. What do we think? I love it, it's kind of a little bit loofah, a little bit court jester, which I'm kind of obsessed with. I feel like the bottom, I could have probably added like some elastic to this so that it like stuck tighter to my legs instead of kind of just like being like there. But I mean, what would my videos be if the garment at the end actually turned out to be perfect and well-fitting? Like it wouldn't be a sewing tutorial by online time. I actually was gonna do yellow hair with this cause I thought like purple and yellow, like duh. But when I tried it on with the outfit, it just didn't really feel right. But I at least have a little bit of yellow in the eye. Anyway, this video was sponsored by Adobe. So we're gonna do a cute little photo shoot on my phone. And I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to get a really cool looking professional edit using your phone on Photoshop Express. Cute. Let's do one more. I think we have enough. And I have a picture here that I wanted to use as the background. I just got it like from the app. I love the like geometric pattern. I think it's gonna work perfect, but I don't love the green in this. If I go to HSL, I can like change these colors. Don't really know what HSL stands for. <laughs> But I know that when I press buttons and click the slider, then it looks pretty. All right, that's perfect. So I'm gonna save that. And then if you go onto the mix function, then what you can do is you can add one of the pictures that we took, like I'll take this one. The really cool thing about this is you don't even have to worry about what's in the background. You can just cut it out like with one button, just like that. If you want, you can like go in and sort of refine it a little bit further. And if I go to refine, it sort of feathers it out a little bit. But then you can put it on the background just like that. Isn't that cute? And I can turn her upside down. And if I want to add another layer, maybe this one, cut her out, bloop. I have to remove a little bit, just like that. Ooh, I think I took off a bit too much. The app's like own AI does like a really good job at knowing what's the background and what's not. I guess the only hard part is my hair because it's curly. And look at that, isn't that fierce? If you want to like edit the individual pictures, you can also do that. Saturation. Yes. Let's do it there. Okay, now I feel like the background also needs more saturation. <laughs> Let me do that. More vibrance. Darken the blacks a little bit. Maybe we could do one more picture. That might be a bit of overkill, but let's see. Cut me out. Fears. All right, she needs the saturation right now. Do we like that in the front? Maybe there. And then put that one up front like that. How do I rotate? All right, I feel like this is the picture. I'm gonna save. There you have it, isn't this cute? Thanks to Adobe for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. I don't know when, I'm not gonna promise that I'm back for good making sewing tutorials because sewing is really hard, but I feel like this project kind of got me passionate about it again and this was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and that you learned something new. And if you ever decide to make your own hyperbolic dress, um, give me a tag, I'd love to see it. I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you guys when I see you. Is that fair? Bye. Mwah.